Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Hi, Calvary. Amber here. Today we're going to look at Matthew 13, talking about the parable of the weeds. So let's start in verse 24. It says, He put another parable before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while his men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared also. And the servants of the master of the house came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have weeds? And he said to them, An enemy has done this. So the servant said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he said, No, lest in gathering the wheat, the the weeds, you uproot the wheat along with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, gather the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. So that's super simple and easy to understand, right? No, it's not actually. Uh, Even the disciples were like, I have no idea what this means. And thankfully they asked Jesus, What does it mean? And he explains it to them. So we're going to jump down to verse 37 and see what Jesus says. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man, which is a title referring to Jesus. The field is the world, and the good seed is the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. So he gives an explanation for what he has been talking about. But when we read that, we think, how does that apply to us today? And so the first thing I think that we need to recognize and understand is that God knows and recognizes that there is evil in the world, and he has a plan for it in his perfect timing. God will enact his perfect justice on all evil at the end of the world. And he has his plan and his timing for how that is going to work out. And so we don't have to worry about it. We don't have to live in fear. We can trust God's plan knowing that he has perfect justice and he will take care of it in the end. The other thing is we don't have to try and be weed pickers and identify and root out evil in the world. That's actually the opposite of what Jesus said for us to do. He said, don't do that. Um, We are not supposed to enact God's justice or judgment uh, on the world. That's God's job, and he will do that in his time. So what does it mean for us while we wait for God uh, to enact his justice when Jesus comes again? So everyone has two options while they're here on earth. You can either be a son of the kingdom, which means you have a relationship with Jesus, or you can be a son of the evil one, Satan. Those are the two options that all of us have. So if you choose to surrender to Jesus and have a life-changing relationship with him and accept God's forgiveness and grace and salvation, then we need to live as sons of God. And so the first thing that means is that we don't have to live in fear. Fear is never from God. He tells us repeatedly in the Bible, do not be afraid. So fear is not from God. He doesn't want us to live in fear because if we have a relationship with Jesus, we are a part of God's family. We know that he is in control. He is good. He has a plan. He is faithful and true, and we can trust him. And if we are a part of his family, we belong to him. And so we know he's in control. He wins the victory. And so we don't have to live in fear. We can be filled with God's peace and we can let the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So we don't have to live in fear. And the second thing, if we want to live as sons of God, then we need to take our relationship with Jesus seriously. We actually need to make Jesus the priority in our life. If we have a relationship to Jesus, then we've said that he is our savior and Lord and our king. So let us actually live that way. 
And so what does it mean? It means that you want to spend time with Jesus every single day, getting to know his heart and his character. Um, so read the Bible and study it and get to know what God says. And if you come to a passage like this where you're like, I don't actually know what this is talking about, ask someone. Ask a friend or your life group or ask a pastor or a staff member. We would love to answer any questions that you have about the Bible. Uh, you can put your questions in the comments below or email any of the staff or get a study Bible. They're really great because you can read a passage and then at the bottom, it will explain what the passage is talking about. But study the Bible and know what God says so it can transform your heart. And then pray with God. Have deep, meaningful conversation with God every single day. So make God and the relationship you have with him a priority in your life. So today I pray that you choose to live as sons of God. Have a great day.